guide. You wouldn't guess what I saw in the dome. A snack? Well, yes. Uh, well, anyway, the device had started showing an image of our solar sister. It zoomed in and started to show a round blob of chocolate ice cream in space. Sounds like you had seen an image of Duna. It was. What should we do now, Bill? We'll have to contact KSC. They'll want to know about this. So, that is what Ledwell had seen from the device. Understood. We advise you to return to base. Meanwhile, we will send a team to manage the base. It seems, guys, we have a lot of work ahead of us to prepare to go to Duna. Roger coming out. Well, boys, it looks like we're gonna have to go to Duna. Yes, in the pursuit for more science. And for lots of more ice cream. Ooh, Duna to go, we have to. Funny enough, we have also have a contract to go and explore the planet Duna, and including the moon eye. Anyway, welcome back to Kerbal Linear Odyssey. This is episode 10. And what you're watching right here is the launch of this one scoop Minmus mission. Where we're actually going to go and explore. We're going to actually send a Kerbal to the surface of Minmus to explore and find out if Minmus is really made of ice cream. And he's, to prove it, if it is ice cream or not, he's going to bring two scoops back for Jeb. And this mission is piloted by none other than one of our founding Kerbals, Bob. So a quick fast forward into the video and you see we've got our lapses up and we're getting ourselves into a bit. And yes, 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 I make some more space junk. As you can see by here, oh well at least when I separate it. Not good, not good at all. I could have used that stage I suppose, to far to the boost to get me towards mid mess. But I added a transfer stage, so I'm just going to use that. But right now I need more science, more money for our continuing our space program. Because I want to put a station up into orbit and I haven't got the, what is it, docking ports. And if you at least unlock the junior docking port or the normal one, well I'll be good. So I've got two contracts here, yes I'm gone begging for money. I have to test the radial engines you can see there on top of the rocket and the Mark 26 parachute. So a quick fast forward when we get up into space. The radial engines have to be tested in space on a suborbital state uh, suborbital hop. And the parachute has to be tested about was it under 20,000 but it's traveling at a just under 919 meters per second. Anyway, you'll see the stats on the video by here. And we've successfully got the engine, radial engine tested. But we might as well fire him while we're up here. So fire him we do. Bye bye, ascent stage. We're gonna beat you to the ground. And we've got a parachute. <laughs> Uh, yes, coming down now, we're going to, well, I'll just try a bit of science. I'm trying to remember what I did here, yeah. EVA! EO Doc decided to do an EVA and Brave doing an EVA report. Now, can he get back in the capsule before we end the atmosphere? Well, by the looks of it, we can, and I know we can because I've done it. Yes, this is all post commentary, so stop scratching your head by there. Mark. Come on, Theo Doc, you can get in there, you can do it. I don't know where it is, I'm not sure if it's the speed, the suborbital trajectory, but it seems to give you a bit of. seems a bit iffy trying to maneuver your curbal in space. Whether you're in orbit, it seems to be fine. Hey, yeah, well, maybe it's just me. I'm just worrying that I'm going to not make it. Alright, let's fire it down, let's go a bit faster because we've got to get over 490 meters per second and we're well over that and I'm f at the moment I'm afraid that the atmosphere will slow me down too much but I find the opposite the atmosphere at these heights don't slow you down enough oh yeah the altitude is 8700 meters between and 18,000 okay and we've done a successful test of that very well we can come down now and Come down, we will. Are we traveling too fast? I hope not. Oh, this, this is a large parachute. We should slow us down a lot more than the smaller parachutes. I haven't unlocked this tier of technology yet. So does that mean it doesn't exist? Do 
we buy blueprints off others? Or do we develop our own? I don't know. The contracts seem a bit weird in that respect. Perhaps they should do it. Do you unlock the parts? Or you research them, but to fully unlock them, you have to do the testing to fully unlock them. Anyway, next up is my space station. I've unlocked the doggy part. Yay! Yay! Good, you had enough science and money from that to launch this station. This is the core element of the space station. It's basically got two docking ports. A science lab and a... Oh, what is it? Hitchhiker pod. The hitchhiker pod is mainly the... Oh, what do you call it? The crew capsule. That's where they'll stay. That's where they'll sleep together. Yes, in one room. But that'll also double up as an escape port. Um, escape capsule. To make sure they can escape safely. Now that houses four kerbals, so that means you can always ha can only have four kerbals on the space station unless we dock another escape system, escape capsule. I suppose we'll find out about that in the future episodes. Anyway, here we are getting our shells, our apolapsis up. Now the engine to get the rocket, this one here, to get up is the small um, LV909. And it does not give you much thrust, so that's why I'm going to get my apolapsis just up to 80 kilometers. Then I'm going to do a full thrust and get our get our apolapsis up to 100 kilometers, and then we can circularize. Then after that, simple. And I'd like to put a butt here, but there's no butt. This goes perfectly okay, and I just spoiled it by saying that. Because now, but now I suppose I can talk about something else. Yes, here we go for our circularization. Not a perfect orbit, nor a perfect 100 by 100, but never mind, I'm not here for perfection. I'm here for showmanship. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you like the blue lights, the turquoise lights on there? Yes, I hope you do. I do. <laughs> we'll be adding multicolored, I suppose, when we do extra connections. Anyway, transferring the crew, and I was going to transfer in Jeb, but. No, Jebediah does not like that new transfer button kit, squad. He likes to do it old hat by EVA. So out he gets. A little twiddle around watching Kirby go in below. Who doesn't like doing that? I think I've done a screenshot here. Yes, excellent. Now come on Jeb, back in. You've got science to do. Yep, so he goes to the science module and he says, oh, bugger this, I've been stuck in that capsule for too long. Let's go into the hitchhiker's pod and get a snack set. Yeah, I think by here I transferred the other two crew into the others, ah, because hey, they set up the space station, they tested all the equipment, it's all working fine, they don't need to escape back to Kirby. So another screenshot or two later, and we, well, well, now they can go and rest in the crew cabin. All three of them are happy. Look at that. They're happy. They've completed their mission. Jebediah using his remote command systems, lining the two, well, capsule windows to be able to see out the curbing, to observe the clad. I do have to unlock that um, copula module so we can see a better picture. Anyway, let's have a nice look at our space station. It's start, yes it looks like a rocket, but we'll do something better soon. But now we've got something more important. Bob Kermin is quite far away from Kerbin. And he is very close to Minmus, which means he's almost due for a landing. So let's get ourselves a bit closer. Let's fast forward the video as well as time, by the way. In the sphere includes, let's get down to a low orbit. I can't remember that this low orbit was in this. Ah, yes, just red is about 14 kilometers for the low periapsis. And that's quite planned because look at those flat areas by there. Yes, that's perfect for lightning. Bob is coming in, Mimas. Prepare the ice cream maker. Thinking about Minmus, I suppose it poses a bit of a challenge for a scientist. You know, what if Earth 
capture a small body of ice like Minmas around the orbit, how long till that ice would evaporate and what it calls a dust trail around Caribbean or around Earth? I don't know, it's, it's quite interesting. Would it be like a comet? Anyway, we're getting our periapsis down to 13 kilometers. And what do we do here? Oh, yes, science. I oh, might as well transmit a crude report back. In fast forward time, because I don't want. Don't think you want to wait for the entire orbit. We're trying to orbit Mimas is really slow. It's a small planet. That reminds me, I have to go and explore Ike. Is Ike small as Minmas or is it a bit bigger? I don't know. Anyway, we're coming down for our landing. The tracks have been changed to something a bit more exciting. Ooh. Come on, Bob, you can do it. In fact, I think anyone can do it. This is the most, this is the easiest moon to land on. If you want to learn how to land, Minmas is your best starting point, not the man. In that respect, the contract system, which says land on the man first, is a bit wrong. I think Minmus should be the best bet. It doesn't take that much delta V. In fact, I think it takes a little less because the gravity is so low. So, you know, just landing or launching from Minmus. You can see I'm 28 meters per second, 30 meters per second. On the man at this altitude, you speed up to 100 meters per second. Anyway, you can see our sheets. We can see our shadow, if I can get that out. And I'm going to slow down the video now for the proper landing. Come on, Bob, you can do it. You can do it, Bob. Yeah, yeah it's, just, it's just easy. All you have to do is feather the throttle. Make sure you stay over 7 meters per second. I think most of the parts are rated for destruction from impact tolerance and everything and we are down a little bounce so yes come down a little slower next time but that is good but we are landed we've landed on Minus, the second moon of Kirby the second planetoid or anything else celestial body that the Kerbals have landed on in this series I've landed on Minmus before in in my own space programs but this is a momentous occasion now Bob has put his foot foot first foot falls on Minmus and we take a screenshot from the disembodied camera but now for the surface sample we sneak a taste but it doesn't taste like a delicious dessert and the low gravity is making us feel like a hero so we test that out but so we can do other samples now. We have to put all the experiments and samples into the capsule. And obviously, one more thing, one last thing we have to do before we leave. And that's for a flag down. So planting the flag. Okay, plant it away. Well, what do we put on here? We have to put something. Mementos. This is our first landing on Minmas. We have to put can you put what can you put it took me a little while to think of something you know that will be forever remembered and this is what I came up with Bob picked up Minmas ice cream here yes yes that will be noted in the history books first landed on Minmas just to remind us that's where it was and of course one last jump an EVA from just above Kirby and I think we've completed all the contracts yes we got we planted a flag we've got science trauma on Minmus around Minmus we've done the orbit bit we've done the landing bit yes we got all the contracts required for the Minmus mission success but we can do more yes getting in oh yes we have to do the goose signs and the near materials bay. Almost forgot about them. Now with all that science done, we come out, we get all the experiments storm into the capsule for a safe return. Just in case something happens. Oh yes, and it also helps if you take the data from the thermometer, put it back in put it in the capsule, that means it's free there to do 
the science. Don't get the materials bait. Good one, Bob. Well done. But now we're selling something different, something unique to this mission, something we haven't done on the map. And that's travel across the surface. Go to a different biome. Find out something new. Yes, this is unprecedented. The only planetoidal celestial body we travelled across was Kirby. So we do a little hop. It's easy enough on Minmus. As long as you've got enough fuel there, which we have. We've got plenty of fuel. To, I suppose to go back to Kirby and back to Minmus. But it's not worth just doing that. We'll, we'll travel across Duner a couple of hops. Collect some science. Of course, I meant Mimas, not Duna. But that reminds me, I have to go to Duna. It is one of our priorities. Not only have we found out that the mysterious device on Kirby has sent, given us a signal and given us a visual clues of where to go next to discover what all this is about from the from the dome. From the plants and everything else that's up there. Okay, right now we're coming in for a landing. Okay, let's do a little slower this time. Ooh, little bounce. Still, we came down quite slow. That's pretty good for me. Well done, Bob. Of the more science records temperature. Anyway, while Bob is collecting all that science, why are we? Yes, about Duner. That probe had given us visual cues, visual information on where to go next for our investigation regarding those mysterious devices. Where are they? Where did they come from? What were the other Kerbals who built the base around there? What's their role in it? Well, the investigations have found out that they're the keep Kerbals on Kerbin society. They do not like us going into space and getting science. They think Kerbals should stay on Kerbin. There's a very select few of those Kerbals who who see things that way. And anyway, we do have a contract to go to M to Duna and explore Ike as well. So we might as well go there. Anyway, another hop, another science trip. Now do missions like this. It's quite interesting, you know. When NASA sent astronauts to the moon, they were fixed to one spot. They did have a rover, I suppose, a small rover, which allowed them to vastly increase their distance. But say it's on Minwes, you're on this map. This is traveling much further than that rover did, I think. In size comparisons now, because don't forget, Kerbals are small, this moon's smaller. And, well, you get the point. The point I'm trying to get around here is, will NASA build something that will get people around further in much much less time? Because, you know, obviously you've got time constraints. If you're out in a spacesuit, you've got limited oxygen, etc, etc, etc. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. How are they going to do that? Anyway, back to our mission, because we've got to make sure that we land correctly. And we're coming down, and it looks like we're on a slope. Bob doesn't look too happy in the right left, bottom left, right hand corner. Didn't know my left or my right. Anyway, we're coming down. Obviously, it's critical to make sure that you're landing in a bay place where your rocket can stand up correctly. Now, at this point, I wasn't sure what type of slope I was going to get. But around this point, I realise that the slope is going to be at the wrong angle for our ship. Well, basically, it's got a wider base at the right angles rather than directly to the opening of the capsule. So we turn the rocket sideways slightly, and that gives us a nice area for landing. Make sure we stay stable on the ground. And here we are, we're coming in for the final landing. In we going to make it sweet. Are we gonna stay upright? That's the question. We gonna survive this. And we're down, we're tipping over. No, don't, don't, don't. Bob has saved it. Well done, Bob. No problem. All in the name of science. Bob, you just talked to me. Of course, who else would it be? 
Oh dear, now I'm talking to my own Kerbals. I am going mad. Mind you, that's past gone. Anyway, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, then... Then click the like button, subscribe and comment and all that fun stuff. Thank you, Bob. And you heard the man. Go and do that right now. Thank you for watching again. Or later, out.